this amazing piece of art behind me by, by our very own Aja Charles tells a story of, of the African-American business community in Colombia uh, before the end of, of segregation, a thriving, uh, amazing community uh, just uh, to the west of me um, of, of Washington Street, uh, where there were uh, African-American entrepreneurs. My name is Isa Charles. I am a self-taught artist here from Columbia, South Carolina, and also a muralist. As you see behind me, this is the Black Wall Street mural. This was something that was buried in history as far as our history, because I didn't even know we had a Black Wall Street. So to create something, recreating something that had already been here has been a huge accomplishment and a great thing for me to do. Ms. Charles has captured the essence, the vibrancy, and the substance of the African-American movement in the city of Columbia. This mural sort of signifies and symbolizes the struggles of opportunity. It is amazing that folk would remember this symbol. We're just thrilled that our mayor and council had um, the thoughtfulness to do such a project that I think for years to come will pay tribute to um, African-American culture and the history um, that our wonderful city has had for all these years. The inspiration for Commissioner Murals, I think, came from Mayor Benjamin, who, who wanted to present um, murals that represented the African-American experience in Columbia. That led to a conversation, I think, by city council as a whole, along with Dr. Bobby Donaldson. As we thought about the significance of the placement of that building, Fortune 01, that corner was the gateway to the African-American business district. The 1100, the 1000, and the 900 blocks of Washington Street. Bringing history, African-American history, to the doorsteps of our communities to help educate our young people, and help them understand the history that has taken place, I think was uh, very impactful. So we're excited about this and, and looking forward uh, to adding not just to the uh, physical beauty, aesthetic uh, beauty of Columbia for years to come, but also telling our story in the way that we want our story told. Our story matters, and this is a part of that story. tell behind me the families here from Sally Mae Fleming Brown who decided one day that she wasn't going to sit in the back of the bus and said she just wasn't going to do it and didn't and she opened up the gateway for the court case for Rosa Parks. A lot of times we're bringing the meaning to places that we go, really connecting with the community. In this case there was already a really profound story of Sarah Mae Fleming and we're honored that we got to be a, a small part in helping tell that story on a community-wide scale. Uh, we wanted to bring a life, to bring a movement to this story, uh, because we think it's still a story that is very much still living. So there's a famous case called Fleming versus SCENG that it's filed 17 months before the famous incident of Rosa Parks. And so while many in this country know the pioneering work of Rosa Parks, very few know of the precedent case of Sarah Mae Fleming. I was sort of the lead in using a similar process to what One Columbia uses for mo all of its public art projects. And I've learned more about her as a person through this process and I find that uh, really interesting how sort of self-sufficient she was. These four pieces of art tell the amazingly challenging, sometimes painful, but beautiful story of the African seed and the American sun right here in Columbia, South Carolina. It allows an opportunity uh, for our young people uh, to be able to engage in African-American history where they live. For some, they may never go to a museum or they may, may never go to an art gallery, but they're gonna come to a local gym. They're gonna come to a local uh, recreation facility. And at that point, we reach them where they are. So we're excited about this opportunity to educate. We're excited about this opportunity to, to be able to share history, African-American history, to those young people that may not get opportunities to be exposed to this type of information. So we're grateful to our mayor, we're grateful to our city council, we're grateful to our city manager for endorsing and supporting uh, this process. This mural um, uh, captures uh, the, the moment 10 years after Brown versus Board 
uh, were these children who were in the vanguard of, of bringing Colombia into the 20th and 21st century. It's powerful, it's even more powerful to have some of the young people uh, who were who there then here with us today. And a wonderful example of how uh, together we tell the real story of Colombia in a way that edifies and brings people together. A conversation took place about what locations the city might have available. And that kind of developed into looking at that area and that neighborhood and, and exploring what kinds of civil rights activities or photos might exist. As we thought about the history of Rosewood and its connection to civil rights, I was reminded of a powerful photograph that was featured in the New York Times in September of 1964. And so we shared that photograph with an artist. And in Valencia Park now, there's a powerful rendering of that photograph that captures young men and women as they enter the doors at Rosewood Elementary in the fall of 1964. They are among the first African-American students to desegregate Columbia schools in 1964. I'm really humbled to be given an opportunity to shine a light on these kids who I can't imagine what that must have felt like at that young age to walk up there. These past couple years, uh, I've been, you know, I've noticed that um, though we have made some progress, um, we, we still have a long way to go. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just really humbled to, uh, to be able to add something uh, that is, um, shines a light on the black community. And, and, and I want, you know, um, I, I think it's very important that, that the black and brown community in Columbia see themselves everywhere and feel like they're part of this community, because you are. I, you know, I can still remember that day walking up the stairs and you know, I was uh, a little afraid, a little excited, but didn't know what to expect. But um, that was 57 years ago and um, <laughs> just um, didn't realize the impact of it all. One of the things that uh, we're doing was we wanted to ensure that we had representation from each council district. So these murals are depicted in all four districts, uh, which is very, very exciting. The whole City of Columbia uh, Parks Foundation initiative for these wonderful public art pieces, uh, murals in all districts, has just been amazing to, to really talk about the history, uh, past, present, future, from Main Street to every street, uh, and, and how important that history is to, to, to future generations uh, of Colombians. So everything that we do to this, uh, like what the mayor says, adds to our story. And uh, the more people we can make aware of our story, uh, I, I think just really uh, creates a cohesiveness. Uh, we're all part of this uh, really quilt that is Columbia. This mural uh, brings education uh, to our community. It brings education to the doorsteps of our community and highlighting some significant African Americans that contribute to society in a profound way. Hyatt Park is historically uh, a white park that actually practiced segregation. And as we thought about the changing demographics of that area, um, several people came to mind who lived in the proximity of the North Main area. One person was named Benjamin J. Mack. Uh, Mr. Mack once lived on Monticello Road. He once lived in an area called Ridgewood. Mr. Mack was a very active member of the Ridgewood Baptist Church, but he's probably best known as a staunch civil rights activist who developed a program in collaboration with a woman named Septima Clark of what was called Citizenship Schools. Deacon Mack and Ms. Clark recognized that African Americans were being deprived of the right to vote. And so they engaged in a campaign to prepare African Americans about the purpose of voting, how to register to vote, and then going out to vote. And so the mural on the Hyatt Park wall pays tribute to Benjamin Mack, a man who lived in that community. It pays tribute to Septima Clark, who Dr. King called the mother of the civil rights movement, and it also pays tribute to a pioneering journalist whose name was Lister Belt Middleton. Mr. Middleton lived on the Hyatt Park area. He was the producer of a pioneering television show called For the People. 
And in that show, he showcased African-American history. He showcased African history. And so now the uh, young men and women who enter Hyatt Park will know more about the important roles of Benjamin J. Mack, September Poinsett Clark, and Listerville Middleton. It means a lot that the work that he did, because he dearly loved his people, and he loved putting out the African and the African-American history and getting the truth of that out to people. So to have this honor, to have him memorialized like this, means a lot to us. Long before the birth of, of this country, uh, long before the birth of this city, uh, the African-American community has been actively involved in helping build uh, the, the, the culture and, and, the, uh, and the economy of Columbia, South Carolina. These murals tell that story. I love this mural in particular because of the role that Listerville Middleton played in my development as a young man, as a, as a, as a young man trying to understand his, his place and space in the, in the, in the world. Uh, he's a contemporary. Uh, he, was, he was a leader, an educator. Uh, he was a strong man uh, who, who, who made sure that we all understood uh, the, the internal power that uh, we all had. We were able to lift up the names of these ancestors, these, these community members that have been leaders here in Hyatt Park um, and celebrate black history of Hyatt Park. It's a way of saying thanks also to uh, you know, people who have just honestly touched other people's lives. Uh, seeking nothing in return um, and helping to a lot of times make a difference in those people's lives. We're fortunate that you know we're adding we're able to add murals in city parks that are actually located within neighborhoods and we I think that it is important that murals and other forms of public art be added to neighborhoods because I think it can add so much to the character of a neighborhood and really represent what a neighborhood is all about, showcase them and their identity as a, as a community, and also increase the amount of people that may be spread beyond the downtown area to seek out public art and hear the stories of Columbia beyond just the downtown core.